Cool. Oh, well, first of all, thanks so much for um, taking some time out of your day to, to talk about this. Uh, That's all right. No worries. We're all so busy. Like, as you hear all these stories about everyone sort of having nothing to do, but everyone I've spoken to has got a million and one extra <laughs> things to do. Yeah, this week is the first week where I've really run out of stuff because I hadn't banked on being at home for this long. So I didn't bring home enough stuff, but hey, is what it is. Well, you, you had a lot of foresight to bring home the 3D printer, though. What, what sprung into your mind? So before, um, well, I was actually in the UK in February and March, and I got home, it would have been two weeks before lockdown. I was actually pretty lucky to get home at the time. And um, while we were over in the UK, there was a lot of news articles about people in Europe making pieces for ventilators. Uh -huh. So I thought that um, if we come home and everything goes to pot, I'll make sure I grab the printers. Because I'd already spent a month without them as well, which you get accustomed to having them around. And um, I thought it's a good chance to, one, do something positive and two once that positive thing has been done i can just go wild and create stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ulterior motive then <laughs> minor minor one but you know you've, you've it's all in the um interest of testing for the public <laughs> what i've been telling my team leader <laughs> <laughs> i think that's 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 brilliant and it was you know it was obviously you were keeping up to date with what was going on and that's really paid off so mm. Do you want to, um, why don't you tell us a little bit what you, about what you usually do with the 3D printer when it's um, in the library? So usually what we do with it is um, people come in and, well, they always want to know how they work. So we give them a quick demo of how they work. And then we give them a chance to either design something of their own using Tinkercad or um, they can download a model and put it in the print queue and print it off. So that that is something that someone could conceivably come in and print off. It's a spaceship from a game that um, I'm going to paint up eventually. And, um, you know, this is something else as well. I think we all know what that is by now. Um, so yeah, that's the sort of stuff that people do. And they, um, some people come in and just go wild and create really weird wacky things and other people are a lot more practical so um an example of practical is um the speakers on the computer i'm using now are actually standing on plinths i designed and built in the 3d printer cool so, you know that's the sort of thing you can do with them yeah great what's the what's the wackiest thing you've had someone come in and print um it was a oh, five-year-old kid came in I think it was, it must have been around five, somewhere around there. And it was just shapes everywhere, just all these. And he was like, it's amazing. I want to print it. And just like, if your mum says it's all right, sure. And it was, and it just, it came out fine. It was just, I can't even explain it. It was just, you know, triangle here, rectangle there, in a cube and bits pointing out. It was just, hey, if, but the thing is, is if they love it, then I'm happy to do it. Um, yeah, well, I guess experimentation at a young age, who knows what that's going to lead to. Well, exactly. And I'm not going to judge what people print. That's not <laughs> what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah. um, so do you want to show us the, the components that you've been printing and explain yeah. uh, what they make up? So um, the main piece is this. It's a headband. This is actually one of the... Um, uh, what is it, a Mark II, I think. We went up to, in the end, I think Mark V or six, and they're the ones that got posted off. This was one of my prototypes. So this is actually a headband for a face shield. So the idea is, as you print this off, you put elastic around these little prongs here, and then it sits on your head like that. And then there were other people in the group who were um, laser cutting um, plastic, that would clip onto these nubs. And then at the bottom of that plastic would go a little brace. And then it would sit there. Like, just imagine there's a piece of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it would look like. And um, we've been getting photos and, you know, emails from people that have been using these. 
um, and they absolutely loved them because at the time we started doing it, which would have been, uh, it was actually three days before we went into level four, there was just a real shortage of this stuff. And it was actually a guy who runs a, um, I think he runs a motorbike shop or something like that up in Auckland, um, sort of kicked it all off and yeah, just went from there. So it was really a, a group effort. Um, there was, I can't remember how many people, but there, there would have been several hundred people 3D printing these headbands and then probably about 50 or 60 guys with laser cutters. And then once we got it all printed, we'd ship it up to Auckland. And then um, uh, the fellow who um, started the group, Liam, I think his name is, he would, him and a few other people would sterilize them, UV sterilize them, put them together and ship them out in um, packs to medical centers and care homes and things like that. That's great. So so, yeah. there, so Liam was coordinating the... Um... Yeah, he, um, he ended up coordinating the distribution. Um, and then there was another fellow who came in I think his name was Simon and he was um, sort of taking care of the manufacturing side of things. So it really ended up like this big, a, a much bigger thing than I think Liam thought it would be, but it was absolutely amazing to be part of. And the group was real positive as well. Like just backing everyone up, helping with problems. And yeah, it was really good. That sounds really rewarding. Mm. So, so did the, um, did they all end up, all over the world or were they in New Zealand? No, New Zealand mainly because um, shipping these things internationally was just going to be really tricky. Um, getting them around New Zealand was hard enough. Um, I think a lot of us ended up using um, a service called Pass the Parcel. They were still running it. They were originally set up for Trade Me, but um, they've been pretty good my dealings with them. And I think if you had um, like a commercial courier account, you could use like New Zealand couriers and people like that, but I didn't have that. So pass the parcel was it. So, yeah. Brilliant. And so um, are you still, is it starting to wind down now? Yeah, we got put on standby about a week and a half ago. Um, so we're just waiting for a go ahead again, if there is one. Um, at the moment, we're like the group's just chatting amongst each other and, sharing resources around so if you had bought too much filament or something like that you'd send it off so um there are two kinds of filament this is going to get technical now um that we can use there's one called pla which i use all the time which is this stuff it's um a cornstarch and sugar derivative biodegradable nice to work with um and you know you can use that for the headbands it's not as flexible or as durable over the long term but it'll do the job um, the other stuff you can use is called um, PETG, which is what your Coke bottles are made of. Um, and I thought I'd give that a try. And my printer spat the dummy. Um, it cooked itself several times. And I bought three kilos of this stuff. I got through one kilo and just went, nah, this is just not working. So um, I shipped the other two off to another guy who's been using it because his printer was already set up for it. So, you know, that sort of stuff has been happening. And, yeah, it's been very cool, very cool. But without it, I've been, yeah, kind of at a loss almost. <laughs> <laughs> it was something to do for a few weeks, you know. Yeah. Yeah, something useful. I, I, I think a lot of us were sort of feeling like we, we, yeah, we would like to contribute to, to um, helping out. So I guess it must yeah. have been really rewarding to be able to um, do something practical. It was, yeah. It, it's always nice to do stuff like that. And I was getting, right at the start, I was getting emails from all sorts of people going, hey, did you hear about this group? You've got 3D printers. What are you doing? It's like, yes, I'm all over it. Um, so, you know, a lot of people um, were quite happy that we were getting involved with it too. Um, yeah, but it was a nice thing to do and it was the right thing, I feel, a good use of resources. Yeah, I think it, and it also sort of fits in with library co-papa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Well, that's brilliant. And and what do you think um, the the future holds for um, for your 3D printing enterprises? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, since I've had them at home, I've been trying out a few things. Because um, everything we tried before we opened 
Johnsonville Library was we were taking a punt really as to what the 3D printers would be used for. But now we've been going, well, we've been open for, well, since December. We have a bit more of an idea of what people want. And uh, we've got a lot more guys coming in wanting to make models. So I've been trying out a few things. So hence the spaceship um, and things like this. <clears throat> so this is a Saturn V rocket that I've been working on. Um, Still needs a couple more coats of paint, but stuff like this. That's spectacular. Yeah, that um, is probably the most ambitious thing I've tried. Um, oh, I also did this, which is a little box. Um, you twist it. Yeah. So That's this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've also got a couple of little chassis for robots that will just roam around the floor and things like that. So. I'm just fiddling around with stuff, really. Um, just trying to make a few things that will inspire inspiration in people that come in. That's what I'm up to at the moment. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, uh, final question is, um, how did you celebrate May the 4th? May the 4th? Um, <laughs> I went round to my dad's and repaired his internet while watching The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> It was, um, it was, yeah, that happened. <laughs> I was a good May the 4th. I also found my lightsaber, Excellent. which I've now lost, but it's in here somewhere. It's in amongst the, the office nightmare. <laughs>